11th, 2011. Fox 5 is proud to bring you the Veterans Day Parade live from the heart of New York City. Greg Kelly, I'm Rosanna Scotto, and today we're going to meet the people who know the true meaning of sacrifice. They're willing to put everything on their line, on the line, their lives for our freedom. They know that this is the best country ever, and we're here to celebrate them. And we have a very special guest who will be joining us for the next three hours, Paul Buka, a Medal of Honor recipient, uh, U.S. Army veteran. Sir, good to see you again. Pleasure being here. It's a special day. Paul somewhat reluctant to talk about it at times, but received the Medal of Honor in 1970 from President Nixon. Yes, I did. For actions you conducted in uh, Vietnam in 1968. For actions my men conducted and I was with them. That's humble. That's really humble. Meanwhile, you gave us pins. We're yes. all pinned today. Wonderful. This That's is the official pin of the Veterans Day Parade. It is. You know, when you came back from Vietnam, uh, the story, as told many times, the veterans did not receive um, much respect. Uh, at least, it's been portrayed that way in movies, sometimes in books. It seems to me today, no matter how one stands on the war, uh, the war in Iraq, the war in Afghanistan, the veterans command respect. The veterans are being welcomed home in a way that people in the Vietnam era did not know. It's more it's symptomatic of what happened in World War II. However, when the veterans came back from World War II, there was a booming economy. The war had brought everything together. There were jobs, there was opportunities, the GI Bill. These veterans are coming home today, and too often it's the shuffle of the unemployment line that they hear. And they're wondering, are their benefits going to be honored? Are they going to be paid? There's so much talk about cutting them and doing it. And on top of that, there are no jobs. We have 158,000 current Euro veterans unemployed. And there are, sad to say, some of those veterans living in boxes, like veterans of other wars have. So right now, the Veterans Day Parade is dedicated to higher events. Make so we're going to so we're going to talk about how if people are watching today and they they need a job, they're a veteran, uh, how they can go about Correct. getting a job. Correct. So this will be informative as well as entertaining to see all these beautiful floats and the men and women who did so much for our country. Correct. We've got high school bands from across the country. We have all services represented, of course, and uh, we've got a Fox Five team plus some help from the outside. Okay. Elise Zwick, a former Miss New York, will be providing extensive coverage, uh, interviews from the street. Uh, Elise, welcome. Thank you so much. Happy Veterans Day, everyone. It's such an honor to be here back on Fifth Avenue honoring service today. I'm Elise Zwick, a veterans advocate and spokesperson for the United War Veterans Council. Thank you to all of those who have served, who are serving, and your families. We love you, and we're here to celebrate with you. Back to you, Rosanna and Greg. Thanks so much, Elise. Elise, thank you very much. Back here with Paul Buca as we watch a pretty big American flag yes. go by Fifth Avenue and 41st Street. This is the Ground Zero flag? Yes, yeah. this is not the one that was destroyed uh, during the attacks uh, on 9 11. This one was carried by volunteers. It, it hung over Ground Zero during the recovery efforts. And when volunteers were down there, they really felt inspired to see this flag hanging over uh, the work being done, the re recovery work being done. Throughout the parade, we'll be having very prominent military guests join us here in the booth. We've already introduced you to Paul Buka, who will be assisting us in the coverage. We are now joined literally by the United States Navy, the chief naval officer of the Navy, the number one sailor in the world, Admiral, <laughs> go. Admiral Joseph Greenert. Sir, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good to be here. That, that's a big shoes to fill in the world. I haven't even thought of that myself. But tell us, you. Chief of Naval Operations is essentially the Chief Executive Officer of the United States Navy? Yes, yes. Uh, I have the greatest job in the world. What I do is I provide the organization, training, equipment, uh, and really direction for 600,000 sailors active and reserve and civilians and their families. Tell us about your time uh, in service. Uh, time in service? Well, I'm a nuclear submariner by trade. Uh, I hail from Butler, Pennsylvania and found my way into the Navy via an uncle who was an oceanographer. And uh, I went into submarines because I was going to get wealthy because they made $100 a month in submarine pay. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> well, uh, how does, what's it like to be in New York in uniform? It's it, a little special, isn't it? It's fantastic. I mean, uh, this is a Navy town. It goes way back to the Revolutionary War of, War of 1812. And we come every year for Fleet Week, and it is the port to be in. Well, is this your first? So this is not your first time uh, 
taking part in the Veterans Day Parade in New York City? It's my first time for Veterans Day Parade, but we come every year for Fleet Week, uh, right around Memorial Day, and we have a real big one next year. Uh, it's the 200th anniversary of the War of 1812, a very, very big time in our history in, in the Navy. Could, could you take some time and tell the, the listeners and the viewers a little bit about, we hear about the SEALs. Yes. But we don't hear a lot about the surface Navy and all the other things the Navy can do. What is the Navy doing in this war? So we can well, tell everybody about today, it. Today we have 100 ships deployed, and uh, we're in Afghanistan. We have 12,000 sailors on the ground in the Central Command uh, in the Middle East. Wow. And today we have, we'll have about 30 of our airplanes flying over, supporting the troops on the ground in Afghanistan, about 30 every day. And that's about one-third of all the uh, air-to-ground coverage over there. Well, it's... Uh, useful you're making a tremendous contribution but there's a lot of stresses on uh, on those sailors who are deployed constantly uh it can be tough right it can be tough uh we like all our brothers and sisters in the ground forces and the other services have been supporting for 10 years now and uh the deployments get a little longer uh the sailors they like it they know what they're doing is relevant uh, we need to make sure the families are taken care of. You go talk to any sailor uh, out there, they'll say, how you doing? They'll say, great, I want to make sure my family's doing well. What happens, what happens to the men and women when they come back from service? Are they taken care of? Are they looking for jobs? We're doing quite well, those leaving the Navy. It's a, it's a technical field most of them are in. Uh, but I worry about the veterans, like we're talking about today, those that, especially that are wounded. Uh, these are dedicated people. They're young, they're bright, uh, they're loyal. Uh, and they have a lot of possibilities for our country. This is the Never Forget Float, by the way, the theme honoring the 10th anniversary of September 11th. We're two months past, but uh, that's on our minds uh, this year. Riders. Don't forget, this is also the 50th anniversary Correct. of the start of the Vietnam War and the 70, 70th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. Admiral, where do you go next? After after the festivities, uh, I know the admirals and the generals tend to visit the troops overseas. Where are you going? Well, uh, today I'm going to go home and I'm going to watch <laughs> the Carrier Classic. Uh, this is a bookend event day for us today uh, over in San Diego on the Aircraft Carrier Vincent. The basketball game, uh, Michigan State plays Carolina to open the NCAA. This is so cool. It's right on the deck of the aircraft carrier. carrier. Right. President Obama will be there. Right, and our secretary, Ray Mabus. And one thing about this, the uh, the aircraft carrier, this is where, I guess, the body of Osama bin Laden was uh, disposed of from, correct, right? The burial at sea took place from the Vincent? Yes, they held a dignified uh, Muslim burial at sea for Osama bin Laden. Well, it's really nice to meet you, Admiral Joseph Greenert, the uh, Chief of Naval Operations. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. May I present our coin? Oh! Thank All you. right, Paul. And, and thank Roseanne. you. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank We're coming so much. back with more of the New York City Veterans Thanks, Day Parade. Appreciate it.